the world of Don't Starve. Our characters are sort of just plopped in the middle of this land without any context of where they are or what this place is. But there appears to be quite a rich history to this world, and we can find traces of this history beneath the ground where there are remnants of an ancient civilization. Based on various clues, we know that the inhabitants of this civilization were something akin to arthropods, sort of like the modern day rock lobsters. Perhaps they share a common ancestor. We also know that one day, these ancient arthropods stumbled upon a mysterious material that we now call nightmare fuel, and they used it to build a vast, technologically advanced city. But overuse of this nightmare fuel may have led to their downfall. This appears to be the heart of their city, the aptly named Atrium of the Ruins, where you will find the ancient gateway. I'm not sure what came out of this thing, but I don't think it was anything good. If you've ever mined anything in the caves, you might have discovered some curious fossils. If you assemble the fossils into a skeleton, and give it a heart, it reanimates itself. On the surface, this reanimated skeleton is docile and helpful, leaving ferns and light bulbs in its wake. But as it gets closer to the ancient gateway, it becomes more sinister, more coherent, and more powerful. This is the ancient fuel weaver. It has 16,000 health, it deals 100 unarmored damage, and it has an insanity R equal to Deerclops, or minus 400 sanity per minute. Periodically, unseen hands are spawned around the atrium which can only be seen and attacked if you're insane, and they must be attacked because while they're up, the fuel weaver has an impenetrable force field around it. Being insane does have a cost, though. Besides the inevitable shadow creatures that are spawned, the Fuel Weaver has an attack that completely immobilizes insane players for almost 4 seconds. And those are 4 valuable seconds in this high paced battle where you can lose all of your progress in an instant while the Fuel Weaver gobbles up its dozens of woven shadows, 3 at a time, each one healing 400 health points. The ancient Fuel Weaver also immobilizes you, whether insane or not, with a little enclosure of bones. It also spawns bones from the ceiling, which, you know, great. <laughs> bones coming at you from all directions, why not? The pace of this fight is fast. You don't have much time, if any, to dish out damage to the big guy before it spawns unseen hands or woven shadows, or both. And when woven shadows are out and about, you're really gonna want to kill them before the fuel weaver gets its scrubby mitts on them. First off, I have to give a huge hand to the devs. This is amazingly creative boss design and lore. Great job guys. There is just so much to the ancient fuel weaver in terms of mechanics and lore, but even the substantial amount of hoops that you have to jump through simply to get the fight up and running requires a great deal of explanation. In fact, the hoops are what initially prevented me from considering a fuel weaver speedrun, because one of them sets a hard limit of 22 days on the run. But then I realized there's so much to do that it'll take at least 22 days to accomplish everything I need to do anyway. In my past runs, I sort of assume that everyone who watches my videos goes into them already with a pretty good understanding of what's going on, but I receive comments all the time that indicate that some people are a little confused, so because I want everyone to be on the same page, and because there's so much complexity to this run, this is going to be quite a lengthy introduction, but I do think and hope that it'll be insightful and interesting. If you'd like to skip ahead to the speedrun, I've placed a bunch of timestamps to highlights of the video in the description. I figured that'd be helpful since this one is really long. Okay, first let's talk about the fight itself. I think the Ancient Fuel Weaver is one of the hardest bosses to solo. I wouldn't put him at the top though. In my opinion, Enraged Claws is by far the most difficult boss in the game. Enraged Claws is overpowered to a preposterous degree, but that's sort of an unfair comparison. Like I said in my Enraged Claws speedrun, I don't think the devs even attempted to balance Claws' as enraged form. I suspect it just exists to deter people from killing the gem deer. As far as bosses the developers actually expect you to fight, the Ancient Fuel Weaver is definitely at the top of the heap. 
and probably requires the most skill to defeat by yourself. Of course, obviously, as any fool can plainly see, <laughs> the difficulty is tied directly to the gear that you have and the strategy that you employ. I'm not in principle opposed to cheap or cheesy strategies depending on the style of gameplay. Like say if it's a side attraction or a demonstration of some interesting exploit, then hell yeah, I think that's awesome and I want to see more of that. But not for the main event. At least not for this sort of video. At least not personally. All of that build up, leading to the culmination of the final fight where I hide in a bush or hold the attack key. If a paperweight can do something, I'm not sure it's worth making a video focused around it as if it's some impressive feat. I care more about the main event being entertaining, challenging, and interesting, but maybe you disagree, and that's perfectly okay. These are just my opinions and preferences which I wanted to take a moment to clarify. With that said, I'm imposing some limitations as usual, and the result, I think, is a really good fight. So ignoring pure cheese, the ideal gear to use is a nightmare amulet, a lazy explorer, or two a magiluminescence or armor, a good weapon, a bee queen crown, and some weather panes. The weapon is self-explanatory, as is the magiluminescence slash armor. If you don't know, a magiluminescence increases your movement speed by 20%, so it's handy to quickly round the atrium killing off the unseen hands, but if you're using a bee queen crown, I'd probably prefer the armor to help preserve the durability of the crown since it's a relatively rare item that can only be reliably collected every 20 days. The bee queen crown is a really nifty piece of armor that inverts sanity auras. So instead of the fuel weaver's insanity aura taking away sanity, it will give you sanity. This allows you to essentially ignore sanity altogether, which is otherwise a major aspect of the fight. The time it would take to defeat the Bee Queen is about the time that it'd take to gather enough cactus. Especially now that the Bee Queen is an easier solo fight than when I fought her before, but I'm purposely avoiding the Bee Queen hat because I think it makes the fight a bit too easy. A lazy explorer allows you to teleport out of the bone enclosures so that you can kill the woven shadows before the fuel weaver eats them. It's definitely helpful, but not strictly necessary if you have a weather pane. Weather panes allow you to kill the woven shadows at range and en masse. You could use another ranged weapon like a blow dart for this purpose, but the weather pane makes it much easier. Once you see woven shadows pop up, you'll probably feel a strong urge to freak out and spam the weather pane, but you can also just calmly lead the Ancient Fuel Weaver around and corral the woven buggers into a nice herd that can be blasted away with one or two uses of the weather pane. In my view, you either need a lazy explorer or a weather pane to solo this guy. If you have both, well, that's great. Both will make the fight easier for sure. For this fight, however, I'm going to avoid using the weather pane, but I'll put out another video as Wes where I showcase the weather pane strategy, because doing stuff with Wes is difficult, I guess. By the way, the reason that I use Wolfgang for speedruns, besides the obvious speed and power multipliers, is because I try to come up with and use general strategies that any character can use. Anything Wolfgang can do, another character can. It would just require longer fights, more prep time, and more resources expended. Whereas a Weber, Wendy, Wigfred, Woody, or Wickerbottom specific run could not be replicated by another character. So in my view at least, it's less useful and less interesting. Plus Wolfgang is my favorite character to play as. There's just so much depth to his gameplay. It's also so much fun seeing a fully decked out and mighty Wolfgang utterly annihilate hordes of surface mobs. I view the Nightmare Amulet as indispensable for a solo fight with the Fuel Weaver. The Nightmare Amulet allows you to quickly dip in and out of insanity so that you can attack the Unseen Hands without being susceptible to the Fuel Weaver's immobilizing insanity attack. In theory, you can dip in and out using sanity foods, but in order to do that quickly and reliably, you need to be on the cusp of insanity, and you can't really guarantee that when the Fuel Weaver has a 400 point per minute insanity aura. With the pace of the fight and the amount of things that you have to deal with all by yourself, I don't think the fight is viable without the Nightmare Amulet. 
though if you have sanity information available at a glance and you do use the bee queen crown and weather panes, I do think it's possible to make do by munching on raw green caps or glamour goop and then recovering the sanity back quickly, but it'd be pretty tough. So for the fight, I'll be using a lazy explorer, a nightmare amulet, a magiluminescence, a weapon, and some cactus. Usually I like to come up with my own strategies, but I will be utilizing one that I picked up from Helical Puma. I hope I'm saying that right. So of course I'll give credit where it's due. He figured out that you can avoid some of the bones from the snare by standing at the edge of the arena, which enables you to escape the snare without using up a telepoof from an explorer. I think that's pretty ingenious. It's the sort of exploit that I can appreciate. You're not going to win the fight by perpetually hugging the edge of the arena. You need to venture inwards at some point to at least get rid of the unseen hands, so it requires vigilance to know when you should hug the wall and skill to actually get there without sabotaging the fight itself. Mm, I guess technically you can get rid of the unseen hands from the walls with a weather pane, even if you aren't insane, so long as you have a target behind or around it. Besides Helical Puma's wall strat, I'll be swapping to the Nightmare Amulet at opportune times to induce the Insanity attack when I want to avoid the snare. There is a cooldown on the Insanity attack though, so I can't avoid the snare altogether. I'll also be trying to lure the Fuel Weaver to one of the corners of the arena. The Woven Shadows spawn in a radius around the Ancient Gateway. So by luring the Fuel Weaver to one corner, it'll give me extra time to smack it with a sword and kill the minions that spawned on the side closest to me while the others make the long journey over. But if you're unlucky, you won't have any time in between minion spawns to lure it anywhere or take away any health before it spawns more minions that need to be dealt with. And if you're really unlucky, it will spawn them when it's right smack dab in the middle of the arena. This makes it so that the minions are coming at it from all directions, making it pretty difficult to get them all if you don't have a weather pane. And if the fuel weaver is in the middle of the arena, it's possible that some minions can spawn right on top of it, making it so that those minions are immediately consumed. If there's a large cluster of minions, I'll try to stand near them when a snare is about to come, because the snare can destroy multiple of them at a time. You can also manipulate the Fuel Weaver to walk into the wall if you stand in this spot. I probably won't utilize this, but I think it's kind of funny. <laughs> oh, and you can also bypass the maze entirely if you stand at the edge of the map when the obelisk goes up. I will be going through the maze properly though. Okay, so that's everything to do with the fight, and we haven't even gotten to spawning the Fuel Weaver in the first place. Alright. <clears throat> The first requirement is the Ancient Key. You need to stick the Ancient Key in the Ancient Gateway in order to fight the Ancient Fuel Weaver rather than just a generic reanimated skeleton, and you get the Ancient Key from defeating the Ancient Guardian. You also need 8 fossils, which can be mined from stalagmites or spalagmites. I'll prefer spalagmites because one fossil is guaranteed and sometimes you'll get two. Plus fighting cave spiders is more exciting than just mining a bunch of rocks. Next you need a shadow atrium to revive the assembled skeleton. In order to get a shadow atrium you need to defeat a tier 3 shadow boss on the night of a full moon. This is the hoop that sets a hard limit of day 22 on the run because of the way the moon cycle works. There is always a new moon on day 1, then the moon rises up to a full moon on day 11, and then back down to a new moon on day 21. In order to spawn the shadow bosses, you need to find a set piece which contains the rook, knight, and bishop sculptures. Then you need to find the complementary sculpture piece for each of these chest statues in order to repair the statue bodies. As far as I can tell, the pieces are completely random as to where they spawn, so to find them it will simply take revealing a large portion of the map. Another hitch is that you move very, very slowly when transporting the pieces. The only way to circumvent this slowness is by hitching a ride with a beefalo, which is what I'll do. 
As you can see, it'd be impossible to achieve all of this within a day's time. Even if by some miracle the three pieces just happened to spawn right near the sculpture bodies, you'd still need some decently advanced weaponry in order to actually kill the shadow bosses. So day 21 it is. You need all three shadow bosses because of the way their leveling system works. Only a tier 3 shadow boss drops the shadow atrium. Then you need to actually find the location of the atrium biome. This involves binding and fighting large tentacles, or tentapillars, that are randomly placed in the caves. One and only one of the tentapillars leads to the atrium. Sometimes you can teleport to the atrium biome if it's close enough to the regular caves area though. Unlike the sculpture pieces, there is some pattern that can be discerned in the tentapillar generation. There is always either 10 or 12 of them per cave. And since half of them lead to the other half, that means there is either 5 or 6 warp points. So obviously, if you find one tentapillar, that means that you've found two. And depending on the total amount of them, each one has either a 20% or a 17% chance of leading to the atrium biome. There tends to be one tentapillar for each of the three mushroom biomes, but sometimes not. There's often multiple tentapillars in the muddy and rocky biomes usually one in the guano biome. Swamp is hit or miss. It seems to be 50-50 whether there is going to be one. And the multi biome rarely has a tentapillar. Depending on if I get a lazy explorer drop from the ancient guardian, I might need to fight a few mctusks as well for a walking cane to convert to a lazy explorer. Getting the lazy explorer drop is preferable since it'd save a lot of time, but I'm not going to insist on it. This is a really long and grueling run, and I can't be bothered to start from scratch just because I didn't get an explorer drop two hours into the run. Even though I'm calling this a speed run, I don't really care that much about the time. And since I'll need to craft magic and ruins gear, and I'll need fuel for the magiluminescence, I'm going to be insane and fighting nightmares for most of the run while I do everything else. So yeah, even though this is over 3 hours long, this run is jam packed with loads of action. There are a few bits that I'd recommend skipping, like when I'm riding around on the beefalo looking for the sculpture pieces, or when I'm picking cactus. Nothing really exciting happens then, but most of the run is pretty good. You can also check out the timestamps of the highlights in the description if you want to skip around to see the good parts. Looking at the descriptions of the timestamps will obviously spoil the run though, so don't look if you just want to watch straight through. Oh, and I finally updated my key press widget thing to distinguish between left and right mouse clicks. I'm not sure how many people pay attention to that thing, but I think it's a pretty neat feature. Without further ado, here is the speedrun of the Ancient Fuel Weaver. Thank you. 
Thank <laughs> you. 